Hey everyone! Do some of you struggle to get more views and subscribers to your YouTube channel? Do you wonder why people aren't watching your videos? Well, on this live stream, what I want to do is discuss what the YouTube algorithm is, how it works, and what you can do to trigger the YouTube algorithm. So, uh, especially in 2019, because uh, YouTube has uh, come up with some new statistics that we can look at and by looking at those uh, looking at YouTube analytics you can also modify or improve different things about your videos and your channel to trigger the algorithm so because it's 2019 and maybe a lot of you are wondering what the YouTube algorithm is I thought I'd uh, dedicate this live stream, or if you're watching the replay, to um, kind of look more deeply into what this YouTube algorithm does, and then look at some of the um, the five ways that you can actually trigger it. So uh, my name is Herman Drost. Uh, my channel is all about how to grow your audience on YouTube, so you can generate traffic, leads, and sales on autopilot, 24 hours a day, seven days a week year after year. So the beautiful thing about YouTube is that you can you can create one video like I've been on on YouTube since 2006 and I didn't really dedicate much time to it then but you know there's videos that I did several years ago that are still generating sales, leads and subscribers. And sometimes you never know that uh, one video that you created some time ago uh, maybe it never got any never got much traffic, never got much traction on YouTube, but suddenly because of the change of the YouTube algorithm or suddenly a change in the um, in, on social media or on the net, people suddenly have an interest in that particular topic and you know your, your YouTube video kind of suddenly attracts a lot of traffic. So that's, that's why you never know uh, when you create a video, you put the effort into it once and then it can produce traffic, leads and sales for years to come. So you're, you're investing once and then you're reaping the rewards after that. So I want to um, invite, uh, say hello to everybody here. Uh, we've got, gosh, I can't pronounce that, but uh, Harish Kavit, got Harley, good to see you. Paul Center Funny, Wendell Live, CTA Wall, uh, we've got Danny, we've got Grumpy Man's Reviews, Rosie and Grace, Vissy Vissy TV, and Watson Michael's Bag. So yeah, thanks for all uh, coming by here today. So um, I think the YouTube algorithm is kind of mysterious because um, YouTube uses probably thousands of data points to determine, you know, how, what, what kind of videos to serve to you. So, um, so when you're watching the video, they're, they're kind of keeping track or the algorithms keeping track of the videos you're watching, the kind of engagement that's going on. So they, uh, with the YouTube algorithm, it's trying to decide what what videos they want to serve up next based upon your interests or based upon your browsing behavior. So in that respect, uh, that's why you'll see uh, certain videos appear on the right side, on the suggested, you know, on the right side of the watch page. They'll appear in your subscription feed. They'll show up in search. Uh, they'll show up on the home screen, etc. So there's all different ways that YouTube serves those videos to you and um, so today we're going to talk about how you can trigger that algorithm so your videos can show up in those different areas on YouTube and once you understand the kind of that behavior of YouTube then you can you can do certain things with your videos to uh, attract more views and subscribers so um, so then what is the YouTube algorithm? Well, the, the thing is that um, there's billions of hours of content that is uploaded to YouTube every day. And so 
the problem is that you know there's not enough people to to kind of monitor and serve up you know those the, the right videos for the right people at the right time all over the world so they came up with this um, what's called machine learning and so machine machine learning means that this algorithm that they've uh, come up with it uh, it helps to identify you know what videos should be served up next to the audience so YouTube relies on this sophisticated YouTube algorithm to match each viewer with the video that they're likely to watch and enjoy so they kind of tailor the videos to to the, the different interests of each different viewer so um, it do, YouTube does its best to show the the right videos at the right time in the right place so you know you might be um, you might be might have been watching like a, of well what, what did I watch recently um, oh, I, I think I was just watching um, I was watching on my phone actually just a lot of uh, uh, up on the on the YouTube app itself you know the the uh, main YouTube app I was watching these um, these big waves that were uh, where boats were going over these big waves and 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 the 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 boats couldn't make it over the big wave so I watched a few of those videos because it kind of captivated me and then I went away then I came back and then more videos of those types that I've been just been watching were surfaced to me on the YouTube app and my computer so YouTube I guess the algorithm was thinking wow hey this person is watching watch watching lots of videos or watching or had just watched several videos on um, big waves that we're, we're now going to serve him more of those types of videos so you've probably experienced the same where you've watched you know maybe you've uh, binge watched um, a whole bunch of cat videos or you binge watched a whole bunch of videos from somebody's channel and then you know more of those types of videos maybe not necessary from that channel but similar types of videos will be surfaced to you on the uh, right side of the watch page in your subscriptions in your subscription feed on your home screen uh, etc so uh, that's kind of a little bit how how the YouTube algorithm works and uh, how do they do it well they they kind of look at um, they look at your thumbnails look at your titles your descriptions and if other viewers have been enjoying your videos so uh, so that that kind of means that you know it's very important that you create a good thumbnail create a good title description and tag so basically you know how to uh, optimize your videos so that more people can uh, you know more people can watch your watch your videos so if say for instance if you create a better design thumbnail than your competitors and then as people are searching for that topic in the search engines they look at your thumbnail and they they are more inclined to click that thumbnail than your competitors thumbnail then that means that people you know those people are going to be watching uh, your video over your competitors video and they'll surface more of those types of videos from your own channel from other people's channels uh, you know for you to watch so it's it's a, you know and especially if you're in a competitive niche it can get real tricky trying to trigger the YouTube algorithm by creating good thumbnails but you know the good the the, uh, the good thing is that YouTube provides the analytics and the the click-through rate of your thumbnail so you can try to improve it for each video you produce so basically the algorithm is looking at um, you know what what people what videos you're watching what you've been watching your browsing behavior and so they can surface more videos in the future of what you want to watch so um, so what what are therefore the goals of the algorithm well it's actually to get the or get the audience to to actually like more like more of your videos and uh, because they sometimes people think 
well, you know, the algorithm doesn't like my videos. Well, according to YouTube, and, and this is really true, the, the algorithm follows the audience. So if you can, you can really captivate your audience through your thumbnails, through engaging videos, uh, then the algorithm will surface more of those videos to your audience. So that, so just keep that in mind that you can't, you can't really blame the algorithm, but it's, it's based upon what your audience, uh, you know, uh, surfing, surfing, surfacing or creating videos that your audience is interested in. So, so trying to solve their problems, maybe entertain them, uh, trying to keep them engaged throughout your video. So if they're watching your video based upon the thumbnail and the title, and they're watching your video all the way through, then this is, this is some of the criteria for creating, uh, for, for triggering the algorithm. So, so what, uh, what I want to talk about now is like some of the, the, the five different ways that your audience discovers your videos. So, uh, and I think the most, uh, a lot of times, uh, and I've seen this uh, on big channels, they often say, well, the biggest traffic source, um, the biggest traffic source that where people get the most, uh, most views and subscribers is from suggested videos. But according to my statistics, and this may be different for yours, most of my traffic is coming from search. So that's why I want to talk about search first. But uh, let me know in the uh, in the chat where does most of your traffic come from? Does it come from uh, search, from suggested, from Google, from uh, subscription feed, um, you know, from your home screen, etc.? But we're going to look at each of these, and uh, then going to look at how can you trigger the algorithm for these five different types. So with search, uh, this means that YouTube, is, YouTube strives to uh, give the most relevant results based upon the keyword phrases that you uh, put in your video. So uh, for your a keyword phrase for your title, so a keyword phrase that's in your description and in your tag. So if you target the right keyword phrase, say, so last week I talked about, um, what did I talk about? Creative Commons, I think it was. I can't remember, but say for instance, you did some keyword research and you discovered that how to train puppies not to bite gets a thousand searches per month and uh, there's not much competition. You got a good keyword score on TubeBuddy. So then you go after that particular keyword phrase. So then you create an engaging video based on how to create, how to stop, you know, how to prevent puppies from biting, um, or how to train puppies not to bite, and then people searching for that particular keyword phrase out of the thousand searches per month. Hopefully, your video will appear on YouTube search. So then what happens is those people that are searching for answers to how to stop their puppies from biting will find your video based upon, you know, entering that particular uh, keyword phrase in the YouTube search bar. So that's why that's how your video is discovered through, um, through people entering their keyword phrases, or entering a particular search phrase in the um, in the YouTube search bar, or it could even be into Google. Because actually with Google, uh, also your videos can show up as a carousel in the uh, at the top of YouTube search. So you can get uh, both YouTube and search for those particular keyword phrases. Um, okay, Harley's saying that my track is evenly divided between YouTube search, suggested and external, when 90% is Google search. Yeah, that's very interesting. So um, I know for me, most of my traffic, and this is kind of maybe not really typical because a lot of people are saying it's mostly from suggested, but most of my traffic is coming from 
external, which is actually Google search. I think it's like 65 or 70 percent. So that's external. And then then after that, it's a YouTube search and then maybe suggested. So so, um, yeah, I think everybody everybody's channel is different, but maybe because uh, Harley you got a to do it yourself channel, maybe people are more inclined to search uh, in Google and YouTube, you know, for that particular uh, for those particular videos. And Rosie Grace is saying about one out of a hundred from Facebook subscribers to US hard to get folks off there onto YouTube. So are you saying that uh, most of your traffic's coming from Facebook or uh, just one out of a hundred? Sounds like a very small portion because I find even though I uh, promote my videos on Facebook, Facebook groups, etc., only a very tiny, tiny percent of my traffic comes from Facebook. So good to know. <clears throat> so um, so the rankings that you get on, in YouTube search, this is the uh, this is the the uh, one of the ways that you can trigger the algorithm. The rankings are, are really based upon uh, getting a high click through rate on your thumbnail. So if you can uh, improve the click through rate, on your thumbnails, then YouTube will surface more of those videos on other people's channels uh, on the uh, on the on the watch page, and uh, and also suggested. So, <clears throat> so I think the uh, when you're talking about YouTube search, I think the main thing is you're finding the right keyword phrases that are not too competitive, <clears throat> and still uh, you have the possibility of ranking for them. <clears throat> Excuse me, and to do that, creating a good thumbnail, title, description, tags, and um, so you have to see, you know, what when you think about YouTube search, think about like a series of videos you can do. So if you say, say you get a a video that's doing well in YouTube search, you know, and the most of the traffic's coming through through search traffic uh, from YouTube and Google, then I would say create more of those types of videos, maybe um, like a, uh, a similar topic, but from a different angle. Um, you can do different scenes. Uh, you might invite a guest, talk about it, etc. So uh, the whole idea is that you're trying to uh, trigger the algorithm through uh, finding the, the keyword phrase that people are really searching for. So according to YouTube, you want to um, incorporate the most relevant search terms in the title, in the description, and in the tags. And they recommend in the description to add like one or two paragraphs because in the description, when people go to watch the video, then um, at the under the video, you only see like one or two lines of the description. So when you write the description for your video, Make sure you put the top top benefit of why people should watch your video in those first few lines, because most most people are not going to click uh, see more or watch more uh, in the description. So uh, make sure you put. And if you uh, want to um, also link to or provide a link to a, a lead magnet, then you want to also put that in the first few lines of description. And another thing to do with search is that you will also want to con continually brainstorm new ideas. So um, you can look at your competitors, channels, you can uh, go to Google Trends, you can use the YouTube search bar, um, you can look at um, you know different Facebook groups, you can look on the comments of uh, other people's uh, videos, you know, the videos on the channel, look at the comments, what look at what people are asking, you can look at forums, groups, uh, etc. And then you can try to answer those questions and then try to get your keyword phrase in the title and um, 
I think particularly if you have a small channel or you're just starting off, it's kind of hard to get some traction at the beginning. So you got to look at those long term, long keyword phrases. It could be three, four, or five, or six words long, and put that in your title, and then try to you know try to get your video to rank for that less competitive keyword phrase, ones that you have that ones that your competitors haven't discovered yet, and then you can rank for that less competed, competitive keyword phrase. And as you do more videos like that, then your ca your channel begins to gain authority, and then you can um, you know start ranking for more keyword phrases. Uh, Rose and Grace says that uh, doesn't it take a while for videos to surface in searches and suggestions? Um, well, you know when when you first um, when you first upload a video, then if that if that um, video gets a lot of traffic in the first twenty four to forty eight hours, and you can check this in your in your real time statistics in in your YouTube analytics. Like if you go to your um, YouTube Studio Beta, check on, uh, click on Analytics, then you'll see the real time statistics for for your videos, you know your top videos, and um, so usually in the first twenty four to forty eight hours, if you get a lot, if you can get a lot of traffic, a lot of momentum, a lot of people checking out your video, commenting, liking, subscribing to your video, then you know your video will could easily rank. You know, at the top of the YouTube search bar, uh, YouTube search results uh, in the first few days, and then as your, you know, as your as your subscribers, usually the subscribers are the ones that are uh, kind of <clears throat> initially checking out your video. But as they as that subsides, then you know your traffic will subside, and ideally, if uh, if your video gets a lot of uh, a big surge of traffic in the beginning. Then, um, then uh, you know your your video can continue to remain ranking in the in YouTube search. So to keep that going, then you want to try you know ideally want to get ranked in search. So usually it takes uh, about seven days or so before your uh, ranking settle down. So what I find is that you, know, you might get high rankings at the very beginning but as your traffic dis disappears then YouTube is kind of you know based upon the algorithm they're trying to find out where should your permanent ranking be so in that respect um, you'll see your rankings disappear but usually it takes what they call the Google dance so the the rankings will kind of jump around dance around a bit for the first seven days before they kind of settle Okay, so uh, number two, uh, second way that people, that your audience find you is through suggested, and Rose and Grace talked about this uh, in their question, but uh, suggested, suggested videos are the ones that appear on the right side of your, of your watch page, and also in the YouTube app, you know, beneath the video. So suggested videos is kind of like a personalized a personalized collection of videos that an individual and a, a particular viewer will be interested in, and it's usually based upon their browsing behavior or prior activity or one of, what are they what they want to watch next. So, um, so basically, it's a, it's a recommendation. So the recommendations will appear on the right side. They'll appear. On the and the browse features, you know, if you check YouTube analytics, they'll appeal in browse features, which is like your home screen and uh, subscription feed. So YouTube recommends these videos on the right side, on the home screen, and uh, subscription feed. So uh, and also they'll appear in the up next. So after you watch the video, sometimes uh, based upon your browsing behavior, the one the the video that comes up next will be a video that YouTube tries to surface to you based upon your uh, past browsing behavior. So um, so then 
if you want to check, you know, where your traffic sources are coming from related to suggestion, you can just go into YouTube Analytics and um, you'll find, you know, your traffic sources it could be search, could be suggested, etc. So, oh, I actually forgot to show a graphic. So just um, let me show a graphic here. Uh, okay. So on this graphic, uh, this is a video that I did some time ago on uh, how to sell affiliate products on YouTube. And as you can see here, the, um, the main traffic source is uh, suggested videos. So I think it's like, well, I can't quite see, I think over 50%. Uh, so it's higher than the other traffic sources. And you ask, well, why is that? Uh, well, one, one big factor of triggering the algorithm for suggested videos is that you get a, a high audience retention and a high average view duration. So what does that mean? That means that when somebody starts watching your video, they're going to watch your video all the way through. So if you can get over 50% of your over fifty percent of your viewers watching your video all the way through, then there's a high probability that YouTube will promote your video for free on suggested videos. So in this case, my suggested videos is over fifty percent, and uh, so as a result, most of my traffic for that particular video is not in YouTube search, is not in Google search. And even though I tried to uh, create a, a title that would be optimized for search, but instead, because of the high, um, high average view duration or high audience retention, that, because uh, here, if you look at this uh, here, it says audience retention, only one minute and 11 seconds. So I think the video must be probably less than three minutes, but I got a 66.6% .6 audience retention. That means over 50% or 66.6% .6 of the people that watch the video, watch the video all the way through. So as a result of that, YouTube pushed my video, promoted my video for free. And so I'm getting traffic to that video, not from search, not from Google search, uh, but you know, it's being pushed to uh, through suggested videos. So that's something to keep in mind. So if you want to trigger the algorithm, if you want to trigger the algorithm for suggested videos, then try to look at uh, your audience retention graph and your average view duration. And um, then, you know, you can uh, try to better that. Oh, I just want to point out something on that again. Where is it? Okay, so yeah, I got uh, highest is um, suggested videos and, and the audience retention 66.6%. And if I show you this other graph, this is the same video and um, this is, uh, if, you, if you go into your YouTube analytics, then you'll find this, but uh, it says that 60, uh, 68, 0.76, 68.7% is actually recommending, uh, YouTube recommending my content. So, uh, oh, actually, so yeah, 68.7%. So this comes from the home page, mostly from the home page. So 68.7%. And then viewers seeking your content in a different way, 31.3%. And, so, and then it says, you can increase the chance of YouTube suggesting your content by increasing your click-through rate, that means the number of people that click on your thumbnail and your video watch time. So if you can, if I can boost my watch time on this video and successive videos, then YouTube will push my videos, um, you know, uh, will recommend my videos through the suggested videos. So that's something to keep in mind if you wanna trigger that, um, YouTube algorithm for suggested videos. 
So, so how can you do that? Um, well, I think one of the best ways, you know, if you want to get that long audience retention and feel free to chime in here, but I'm probably not going to mention everything, but one of the best ways to turn it to, to get that long audience retention, the high end audience retention is to capture, you know, create a, a good hook at the beginning of your video. It could be a question. It could be showing, um, showing, showing, you know, uh, what they call a, what the heck do they call it? Help me out here. Reverse loop or something where you show you show first the result of what you're ex what you're going to explain, and then you explain it. So it might be uh, so if it was how to train a puppy not to bite at the beginning of your video, you're showing uh, showing a puppy biting different people or biting your your couch and things, and then then so that's the before, and then quickly you show after how they're kind of calm and obedient etc so you've shown um shown about you know shown something that you're going to explain later and he said now i'm going to explain how i stopped my puppy from biting so 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 the whole idea is you're creating a, a good hook at the beginning of your video to uh, capture the attention of your viewers and then you know you're kind of presenting your your main content and you want to, you know, try to keep that engaged all the way through the video. Uh, you might link to an end screen and link to an end card at the end. Um, but the whole whole idea is that you want to try to keep them engaged. So even don't. Um, this is one thing you should avoid. Don't uh, use words or sentences that kind of telegraph the ending of your video. You could say, "Well, that's all I got for you now." So that would be kind of telegraph, telegraph in the end, or say, or saying, well, I can't think of anything now to, that I want to say, so I guess I'll end it. So people know already that you are ending the video, and they'll drop off and leave. So instead, what you want to do is try to keep them watching. So link to, you know, at the end of the video, you can say, well, I, I was unable to explain everything in this video because it's so short. But you're in luck. I have another video that explains more deeply about how to train puppies not to bite. So uh, check out my video in the description, or click the link in the card, and uh, you can get a you can watch a whole series of videos there that goes more deeply into the topic that I just discussed in this video. So what you're doing here is you're extending the watch time. So if you can get a a long watch time not just on the, the individual video, but it's successive videos, so the binge watching your content, then there's a higher probability that YouTube will then promote your video or surface more videos um, to your audience, you know, from your channel. So um, it's a higher probability that they'll appear on the right side of the watch page, on the home screen, in the subscription feed, etc. So that's kind of what you want to do is try to, um, you know, create a good thumbnail, keep keep a long watch time, and then extend the viewing time, which which is called session time, to link to another video, or link, ideally link to a playlist, so they'll keep watching more and more of your videos. Oh, Hanachi, uh, yeah, I see you there. I'm just, uh, you know, kind of in the middle of my presentation, so I probably hard to keep up with all the comments, but I'll definitely get back to the comments. Um, so, uh, Hawk Gaming saying that uh, we all start small, so don't get discouraged. What has helped me to look at each view, subscribe as a real person, not just a number. Look at it as each person visiting your home. Hey, that's a great, great tip. Thanks for that, Hawk Gaming. Yeah, I think that's uh, it's easy to get caught up on the numbers. Like, say you only had twenty views on your video, but keep in mind that that's you know, say just like Hawk Gaming said, what about if twenty people came to your home to uh, watch your video? So think of them as real people, treat them as real people, and so you know, kind of. Uh, you know, relish 
the views that you get and then try to improve on every single video that you produce. You know, try to increase your click to rate, try to, try to incre increase your, your watch time, your audience retention, your average view duration. So Scott was saying that I've heard talk that it's a good idea to provide a, a hook sell around two minutes into the video because interest drops around that time. Is that true? Uh, I think it's different for every every video and probably also the um, the length of the video. Say if it was two minutes, then you probably don't need that. But you definitely, I think the 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 main thing is to grab them at the beginning because. Uh, a lot of people say this is that if you can hook them in the in the first few seconds of your video, then they're more likely to watch the rest of your video. So, but if it's a long video, say like ten minutes, then I would definitely um, ask a question or um, do something entertaining, or maybe say uh, you know just uh, if you want to watch a related video that goes more deeply into this this part of this topic, click the link in the card up here. So um, I think the idea is that, you know, if you want to keep them watching, you also want to reset the attention of your viewers. So maybe every 10 or 20 seconds, you can change the position. You can change the angle of your camera. Um, uh, you can also add transitions you might add some b-roll you know uh you know so just kind of changing up the content uh for to keep people watching so um and i think along with those um with the suggested videos as long as and i said also about the um the search uh the search audience is when you come up with video ideas, think about a series of videos based upon a theme. So say your theme is how to train puppies. So that's your main theme. And then you create a series of videos, how to train your puppy not to bite, how do you train your puppy to sit, how do you train your puppy to go to the toilet. So, and then you're creating a series of videos that then you can put into the playlist and then each of those videos, you know, if you've if you thought like ten videos ahead, you can link each of those videos to your playlist. So as you create more videos, you're just linking to that playlist. And then we, when people uh, check out the video that you've linked to, they'll see all the videos on the right side that they can choose from. They can choose from all those all those particular videos. So instead of linking to a single video. They have, a, they have a choice to look at all these different videos. And so maybe they're more interested in how to train their puppy not to, uh, not to go to the bathroom instead of how to train a puppy not to bite. So they'll select that particular video in the playlist. So that means you know, you, you're extending the watch time of your video. And as a result, YouTube will then recommend your video for free on the um, right side, home screen, subscription feed, etc. So, so the as I mentioned before on that graph, let's see if I can get that graph back. It's what they recommend. Oh, it's not that one. Sorry, uh, this one. So as you'll see at the bottom here, uh, and this is what YouTube says, you can increase the chance of YouTube suggesting your content by increasing your click-through rate and your video watch time. So coming up with better thumbnails, creating a more engaging video. So what I would suggest is um, you know, write down somewhere your current click-through rate for your, your average click-through rate for your thumbnails your average uh, audience retention for your channel, then try to improve it by a small percentage. It could be by 0.5% in your next video or 1% in your next video. So if you can get over 50% audience retention, or like I showed on that graph, 66%, then 
then you know YouTube is promoting that video and if you can duplicate and triplicate that then you could you could create videos that are just showing up in suggested videos and you wouldn't have to worry even about search so that that's usually not the scenario for most people okay the third way that that uh, that your audience finds your videos is through the home screen I mentioned this already so the home is what uh, what uh, viewers see first and when they when they when they go to YouTube or when they open the YouTube app so you know when they visit youtube.com when they visit youtube.com on the app on their computer so it's actually a kind of a one-stop destination where YouTube tries to deliver the most relevant uh, personalized recommendations for each viewer so it's a great place for your videos to be found by non-subscribers and I find that most of my traffic comes from non-subscribers you know maybe a small percentage comes from subscribers and usually they're the most active because that's when you when you get the 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 most um, the real-time views in you know, the first 24 48 hours most of your views are going to be pouring in from your subscribers if your channel's been around for a while uh, but after that most of your traffic is going to come from non-subscribers uh, and this you know if, it, if they if they appear uh, if it comes from suggested uh, from YouTube recommending it it's going to be non-subscribers so the non-subscribers are going to see your video appearing on the home screen so um, so how, how these va how these videos appear on the home screen usually it's based upon performance so how how you kept the how you kept your audience engaged and uh, the viewers watch and search history uh, how often the viewer watches a channel or a topic on a particular you know on a particular topic or, or subject and um, and how many times they've already shown uh, each video to the viewer so uh, subscribers watch more from their subscriptions via the home screen than they do from the subscriptions feed so uh, so when 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 YouTube pushes the video pushes your video out then it's uh, more of those types of videos are going to appear on the home screen than they are in the subscription feed and if you go you know if you look at your your home screen for your channel then it's also got listed you know you've got your um, you got your recommendations at the top you've got your um, then you got your subscription you know uh, subscriptions so you can find the videos that you subscribe to as you go down there so how do you um, how do you make this happen well you want to try to upload videos on a consistent basis so um, so I did for me actually uh, in all the years that I've been on YouTube probably the single most important factor is to be consistent so if you can upload videos once a week you know stick to that stick to that schedule and upload twice a week that's great or like in my case I'm uploading videos twice a week and then a live stream on Fridays so to try to keep the momentum going and so people ex uh, know uh, when to expect your videos and then you have more a uh, higher possible higher probability or higher possibility of your videos appearing in search and YouTube suggested so the more videos more frequently you you upload your videos you have you produce more content then that content will appear in search that that, appear, that content appears in suggested um, so just to give you an example of that um, six years ago I created a video that was all about you know how to download videos and uh, it didn't appear anywhere for through all those years but this year um, it suddenly rose to uh, become one of my top performing videos so and it's kind of a crummy video not a very um, high quality video but and the reason that it, that it got so much traffic is that I embedded the video on my blog and then you then Google picked up that video and 
So when people go to search for that particular keyword phrase, then my video appears on Google. So you have that carousel there. And recently, they I think it's been a few months now that YouTube began showing that carousel of YouTube videos at the top of the Google search results. So as a result, most of my traffic is coming from Google search. So it's just something to keep in mind as to you can get traffic from YouTube search, Google search, YouTube suggested, uh, so all these different ways. So, um, so some tips uh, to keep uploading on a consistent uh, schedule, consistent uh, once a week, twice a week, three times a week. If you can't, uh, the good thing about a live stream is that um, you don't have to edit the video. Um, and you can just go live and um, then you've got an extra video per week. The downside is that the live streams don't seem to rank as well as the regular videos. Uh, I don't ask me why, but for some reason, maybe because the, the half an hour, an hour or longer, uh, people don't want to watch long videos. But um, you also want to keep people engaged on your video for a longer time, so linking to more videos. And then uh, then the, the another great tip is that if you find a video that's doing well, based upon the um, your YouTube analytics, you know, what your top performing videos, then create more of those types of videos. So say you have a video that's getting a lot of traffic and say, for instance, it's getting um, 100 views per day, then that's a sign that you should create more of those types of videos. And so you can get more of those types of videos working for you. So create a, a different topic, approach it at a different angle. Uh, maybe find some keyword phrases that that uh, that mean the same, but uh, say, said in a different way. So um, I'm trying to think of an example of that. Um, so how to train your puppies not to bite. You might say how to. Um, find a way how to how to discover or how to uh, or the secrets of training your puppy not to bite you know or secret ways or, you know some some different ways that you can say it and in your content it'll be similar content but uh, you know say it a d different way you create some different b-roll etc and then you can kind of capitalize on the videos that are already doing well Okay, uh, so this is a good question from Hawk Gaming. Any tips on getting more exposure and views on live stream? Um, that's a good question. I think that um, basically most of the people that uh, come on your live stream are kind of uh, already kind of bought into your content. So I uh, probably have to ask you guys and girls why you came to my live stream. You know, do you... Is it because you're watching my videos or it just showed up in the subscription feed on the home screen, etc.? But I would say it's those people that have kind of uh, a part of your community and those are the ones that are mostly attending your live stream. Now, sometimes what happens is that your live stream, you know, you can, if you know what you're doing live ahead of time, just make it, um, you know, schedule your live stream live stream and often it will be ranked for several days even in the uh, on YouTube search you know based upon your keyword phrase so when you do your live stream uh, what I t try to do is do some keyword research just you like you do for regular videos so your video can appear while it's scheduled in the uh, in YouTube search and maybe even after after that and then um, then sometimes what happens is that people join your live stream uh, as you go longer. So people somehow find it in the suggested videos. So, so say for instance, you did a, a live stream for like six hours 
there's a high po high probability that people are going to jump in there from just seeing your live stream in the suggested videos or in search if you've um, keyword optimized your title. So um, so that's just a couple of tips there. Okay, I just want to um, just look at some of my notes here. Um, oh, one thing that uh, I didn't mention was that, uh, and probably this kind of you don't don't have, really have to mention, but I thought I would, is to not violate YouTube policies. So they've got a lot of policies where you shouldn't. Um, you shouldn't swear in your videos so that, you know, if you if you've monetized your videos, then advertisers don't like swearing. Uh, try to uh, avoid you know, using profanity, try to avoid violence, you know, all the YouTube policies that are there. Try not to violate YouTube's policies because you might get a copyright strike. You might get your video demonetized. So you want to kind of try to stay within the YouTube policies and then then you kind of you know your videos will be able to be monetized your videos will be be recommended etc so just be familiar with youtube's policies so number four is the subscriptions tab and this is uh if you go to the home screen then you go, uh, you go down, you scroll down a bit, you'll see from your subscriptions, you'll see the, the title from your subscriptions. So these are, uh, and then also you have the, um, I don't know if you can see it here. Uh, let me see. YouTube. So um, down the bottom here, you've got subscriptions on your YouTube app. So uh, subscriptions tab on the YouTube app so you find the subscriptions feed um, on the home home screen and then also from the um, on your YouTube app so these are these are actually uh, your the people that you've subscribed to and subscribers are the viewers that have really opted in uh, through the notifications notification bell etc and so they'll watch, watch the videos from all areas of your site. Turn off my phone there. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so yes, yeah, so subscri subscriptions tab. Basically, it's just all the, all the people that have subscribed to your channel. So you're, it's going to appear on the on the home screen uh, under from your subscriptions uh, and also on the uh, YouTube app. And so, so then, how do you get subscribers? Um, well, there's lots of ways, but I think the one of the best ways is to ask for people to subscribe in your video. You can ask that at the beginning. You can ask it after you've given your introduction that's generally when i do it um, you can ask for it in the middle of your video uh, you can ask for it at the end in your end screen you can also uh, ask for it uh, in the comments you know pin pin a comment to the top and say uh, if you want more of these videos please subscribe to my channel and pin that comment to the top you can also create a uh, subscribe watermark that appears across all the videos on your channel so this is usually at the bottom right hand side of your video so particularly those people that are starting a youtube channel or maybe haven't done that there's a little subscribe watermark that appears bottom bottom right hand side so that if you put that on your channel then it'll appear say if you have 500 videos and it'll show up on all the videos across your channel so that's that's another way to do it and so you can ask in the description in your video you know say it in your video pin a comment to the top that asks people to subscribe uh, add it to your end screen etc so but 
I think the most important thing is that you want to create content that targets the subscribers you want to attract. So solving their problems, um, entertaining them. And um, so if you're your own target market, then put yourself in the, uh, 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 what, are the what, is, what does the expression say? Put yourself in the shoes of your target audience. So then you can ask yourself, what kind of videos would you, would you like to watch? And then create those kind of videos. And uh, eCabinets is asking, uh, would it be a good idea to change your thumbnails from time to time? That's a good question. Um, I would say that it's a great idea if you are, say for instance, you are getting a, a certain amount of traffic from a video. Because if you're not getting any traffic at all, if you change the thumbnail, then nothing's going to happen because you're not getting any traffic to that video. So. I would say if you want to improve the click-through rate of your old videos that are already getting traffic, and I probably should make a note to myself to do this, is to uh, create a new thumb, design a new thumbnail, and then split test the old thumbnail with the new thumbnail, and then run it for like a couple of weeks. Like, like you can do this with. Uh, with a TubeBuddy uh, legend option. So with a legend option, you can split test a thumbnail. So your old thumbnail that you created like several months ago and your, your traffic, you know, you're getting traffic to that video, well, you can improve the traffic by creating a, designing a different thumbnail that's better than the previous one, split test it, and then YouTube will um, select, you know, based after 15, after 14 days, will select the variation or select the original. And then you can just keep on doing that. You can create a design another thumbnail or get some uh, super great graphic designer to create an amazing thumbnail and then see if you can improve the click through rate of that particular video. So that would be a, you know, if you can, if you do that for one video, then you can do that for like 10 videos on your channel that are, um, that are already getting traffic. And this, this will actually help YouTube to surface more videos um, on other people's channels. So great question. Uh, Archie Cupcake, good to see you there. Um, I've tried to split, I haven't tried to split test yet. Do you have to have the paid version of TubeBuddy? Unfortunately, yes. Um, it's the legend option. Um, if you uh, if you want to get that, uh, then I'll give you my link. It's uh, TubeBuddy, TubeBuddy.com forward slash I site build and use Herman's Buddy at checkout and get 20% off. So it is a monthly subscription but it is a it is a paid uh, paid um, upgrade so paid upgrade to your uh, TubeBuddy subscription now uh, you YouTube has said that they're coming out with a split testing feature uh, when are they going to do that they haven't said exactly when it's going to be it might hopefully be this year it might be next year but usually they tend to uh, announce things, but then are slow, slow to roll them out. But I think the split testing feature, if you feel that it's a, uh, you could try it for like one month and then, you know, split test a whole bunch of different uh, thumbnails and uh, see how it goes. So yeah, the subscriptions, uh, you're gonna see it on your home screen and sometimes you'll see that in the suggested videos. So kind of the same rules apply. Ask, you know, ask the viewers to subscribe in a very genuine way. When you ask people to subscribe, also uh, give them a, a strong reason to subscribe to your channel. Don't just tell them, hey, I, I, uh, I upload videos every week and then subscribe to my channel, but give them a reason to subscribe. 
you know, what what is the benefit? What's the main benefit that uh, that you're giving to the viewer? And you might also ask them to subscribe when um, when you when the viewer sentiment is at the highest in your video. So you can look at like where's the highest watch time of your video, and then you could add you know ask people to subscribe at that very high point uh, of your video. So you'd have to sort of look at previous videos, and maybe you find that most of them drop off after two minutes. So you could put you could ask them to subscribe at that highest point of your graph and uh, then maybe you get you know you get more subscribers that way uh, another way another way to get more subscribers is to look at you know uh, when what country and what time are most people subscribing to your video watching your videos so if most people are viewing your videos at three in the morning, maybe you have to get up at two in the morning and publish a video then. Or maybe you can try um, five in the afternoon, maybe try a Sunday or something. But I, I tend not to worry about it too much because I just kind of publish, you know, Mondays and Thursdays because it kind of fits into my schedule. But if you are kind of flexible, you could try different way different times that you could publish a video. So TubeBuddy has a, um, I can't show it to you now, but TubeBuddy has a, a way that it'll show you where are the uh, highest watching times of your video. And then if you go into YouTube Analytics, it'll tell you which countries, which states most of your uh, subscribers are coming from. So if they most of them are coming from California, then maybe you want to publish a video at right before they get up in California or if it's the East Coast maybe right before they get up on the East Coast so um, and then also another way to find out uh, or to get more subscribers is to go into YouTube analytics and find out which videos or the types of videos that are attracting the most subscribers and then if you can identify that particular video or that series of videos then create more of those types of videos because you know already those videos are, are getting the most subscribers. Okay, number five is the trending tab. So if I look at my um, YouTube analytics, then my trending tab traffic source is almost... Uh, doesn't exist. I don't. I don't get much uh, traffic from trending. Probably because I don't uh, create more create such uh, trending videos. But definitely something to keep in mind. Oh, good to see you, Jock. Uh, so, uh, but one thing did happen. I think about a year ago, I created a trending video that kind of by accident. You know, it was like a video that um, when they changed the rules, they changed the YouTube uh, partner rules from. Uh, from 10,000 views to 4,000 watch hours, 1,000 subscribers in 12 months. So I thought, hey, I'll just create a video on uh, how you can monetize your videos without meeting those requirements of joining the YouTube Partner Program. And as a result, that video kind of took off and it still produces a lot of traffic. It's not, it's not my top performing video, but as a result, uh, it kind of supercharged my channel for several months based upon that trending topic. So, um, so one way to capitalize on trending topics is that you can look in Google Analytics. You can, uh, you know, you, you, uh, yeah, Google uh, Google Trends. Sorry, Google Trends. Uh, you can look at trending topics on uh, on the YouTube home screen. Uh, you can also look at your uh, your top channels in your niche and see sometimes they are doing trending topics, you know, creating videos on trending topics. So you could do a reaction video on a, say like, um, I thought about this, but I, I didn't do it, was the, um, what, what's it called? Uh, the Avengers uh, movie. So uh, you could somehow come up with a creative idea how to incorporate 
the Avengers movie or something to do with the Avengers into the topic of your videos. And then as you know, so, so you know that that's trending, but then you can kind of come at it from a different angle that kind of aligns with what you're doing for your particular channel. So yeah, trending topics can be great to get a, a lot of traffic in a short time. Uh, they, they tend not to be evergreen, evergreen topics because they kind of, uh, you know, kind of come and go, come fast and then die down. But you can definitely capitalize on a trending topic. If you find several trending topics, then um, you can capitalize on them. Because uh, one of my friends that uh, has a, a huge YouTube channel in Virginia, he, uh, when the Fit Spinner came out, then he did, um, then it was like, he did a video on, uh, did different tricks and things and how to make your own Fit Spinner. And that, that then his channel t kind of took off and he got millions of views based upon that trending topic. So um, so if you wanna you know, take a stab at that, look for a trending topic in your particular niche or try to find a trending topic on YouTube or in uh, Google Trends and then try to create videos around it. So um, YouTube recommends to try to make kind of a, a shareable video, an appealing video for a broad audience. So you get a lot of traffic from that trend. So, uh, so the good thing about that is that you might get new fans coming to your channel. So they might come, kind of come across it by accident through um, doing a trending video. Okay, so the, so the five five ways that you can trigger the al algorithm, uh, one is a search, uh, two is suggested, and three is through the uh, through the home screen, four is through um, through subscriptions, and five is through trending, and so um, I think the main the main uh, main takeaways you know from from triggering the YouTube algorithm is really to um, try to improve your click-through rate. Uh, that means you know creating good thumbnails so that YouTube will surface more of your videos. Um, then also you know optimizing your videos, creating a good title, description, tags, and then try to create an, a video that keeps the audience watching. So ideally, you want to keep them watching. Uh, you know the number of people that are on your on your video try to keep 50% or more of them watching all the way through and then also keep them watching more videos by linking you know to a playlist more videos etc so you increase that watch time and then that YouTube will push your videos out and um, then you know to, to also double down on the videos that are doing well and then also to um, you know, look at uh, your audience retention, your average view duration, and try to improve the average view duration and try to improve the audience retention for each video you produce. And then I think the, uh, the big thing is also try to get a lot of traffic in those first 24 to 48 hours of your video going live so that, um, you know, you get a lot of uh, comments, a lot of likes, a lot of people subscribing. So uh, it's kind of hard to do when you're starting off, but uh, hopefully, you know, if you've got, um, if you've got uh, a, a lot of uh, popularity on say Instagram, Facebook, etc., you can try to bring those, uh, bring that audience over to YouTube. And some people have success with that, but I find that usually people that are on Instagram, Facebook, don't necessarily jump to the other platform. So that's why, you know, focusing on YouTube search, focusing on YouTube suggested, Google search, um, also uh, embedding your video on your blog, you know, uh, through that, then your videos can show up in, as a carousel, one of the, the one of the um, thumbnails in the carousel, uh, in YouTube search and then you can get a ton of traffic from that because that's 
that's like one of my highest traffic sources. So definitely keep that in mind if you're interested in the long-term growth of your channel. So uh, Jock is saying here, I think it's better to concentrate on content that engages and builds long-term relationship than views that has none of that. I would rather have 10 real people than a thousand that won't convert. Yeah, it's true. I think especially if you're trying to, um, say if you're trying to use your channel, use your videos to sell a product or to get leads, you don't want people just to watch your video and do nothing you know because you can you can have a you can have a channel that um gets lots of views and lots of subscribers but but uh, say what if um what what's a youtube went away or maybe your channel got terminated so that's why you want to um try to bring your you know your most avid subscribers try to also get them on an email list so then i highly suggest or highly recommend you know, trying to build an email list off YouTube. So for, you know, for some unknown reason or known reason, people have had their, you know, three strikes and you're out. You get, you might get three strikes because you, uh, you violated some copyright on your channel. And so you get a strike and you don't fix it and you get another strike, you don't fix it and you get another strike and then YouTube terminates your channel, maybe you have like 50,000 subscribers and suddenly you've got no, um, you, you got no channel. And so therefore, you know, try to build up that, that email list off YouTube just in case uh, something happens to YouTube. Like, what was that? What's that one called? Um, what was that one before? before YouTube or before, before Facebook, I can't remember it, but that went away, nobody talks about it anymore. So that's a real possibility. So I think that's a good point, Jock. <clears throat> um, if you have liked this live stream, uh, please give it a like, so to encourage engagement. If you've got any questions about what I uh, presented today, then put them in the chat. Uh, if you think about them later, then put them in the comments. Or if you're part of my um, Facebook group, then you can put them in the Facebook group. Uh, that's, let me, let me enter it here. Facebook.com groups to video bootcamp. I think that's it. Oops, didn't spell it right. Yeah, so if you're not a member of the Facebook group, then, um, you know, take a look at that URL. And um, then, uh, you know, people, you can get feedback on your thumbnails, get feedback on your videos, interact with like-minded people, ask questions, etc. And uh, so that's kind of handy there. Um, So, got a very serious question here from Fiam 3 z Are those real plants? Uh, yes, they are. It's a real plant here. See, real plant, uh, real green, pl not a plastic one. <laughs> okay, looking at uh, is there a split test ballot without a third party app? Is there a way to do a split test without a third party app? Um, yes, but I can't remember what it was. There was um, somebody promoted um, an application, I think a couple of weeks ago. I can't remember what it was, but it was a paid thing, it wasn't a paid subscription. But um, as I said to uh, Simply Beth or Beth, um, YouTube's going to come out with a split testing feature. They said when it's going to happen, uh, I wouldn't hold your breath. But definitely, um, if you want to check out TubeBuddy, uh, I'll put TubeBuddy.com forward slash I site build. So, 
So um, just go to tubebuddy.com forward slash iSiteBuild, uh, then use Herman's Buddy at checkout if you want to upgrade to a paid version of TubeBuddy, like the legend option gives you that split testing feature. Now, if you don't want to use that, then what you can do is just, um, you know, just you could create a different thumbnail and then just look at your click through rate manually after you've created that new thumbnail. So you can just swap out the old thumbnail and then you can uh, upload your new thumbnail then let it run for a couple of weeks and then see if it's improved the click-through rate from your previous thumbnails. That, that'd be a way to do it manually. But I find that the, uh, yeah, the TubeBuddy feature is great because you can do multiple uh, tests for multiple videos. Okay, just looking through the questions here. Oh, thanks, Wayno says, uh, I love a star. He's not one of those guys who just seems to hype themselves all the time and give, gets, gives straightforward advice. Yeah, try to want to, try to, want to be authentic and try to, uh, try to give you advice on what's working on my channel. It may not necessarily work for your channel, but I think I, most of it kind of generally does work for most channels. So, um, yeah, try to be um, kind of straight up front, you know, with what's working, what's not working. And also I check, you know, what's, uh, what YouTube is saying, etc. So try to do my best on that. <laughs> okay, Hawk Gamer says... Uh, Came to live stream for the content. You're down to earth. Also watch most everything you do with algorithm. Oh, that's good to know that the algorithm is working. Thanks for that. And Scott saying, uh, my niche I enjoy because he's real. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Scott is asking, um, how do you get our comments on the video stream? So I'm using I'm using Ecamm Live uh, at the moment. That's what I'm using. And actually today I started I and this is a new feature that Ecamm Live Ecamm Live came out with is that you can use a different camera. So I'm using my uh, Canon M50 this time. And then I think if I let me try this, uh, I got two camera. I got my old Logitech camera, so I'm going to switch to that camera to that one, see if it makes any difference. So this is, uh, <laughs> this is my Logitech camera that I've got propped up on my printer. So I can actually switch cameras. Uh, I can use this camera, the Logitech camera, and then hopefully this works. I go back to the Logitech, ca uh, the M uh, Canon M50 camera. So Today, for the first time ever on a live stream, I'm using the Canon M50, and I don't know if it's uh, if there's a much if there's such a big difference between it. But hey, what what do you guys think? Do you think it's better? I use the um, the Logitech camera here. Uh, of course, you know I'll probably position it uh, straight, of course, or that I stick with the uh, Canon M50 camera. What do you guys think? But I'm using Ecamm Live, so you can you can kind of switch cameras. You can put comments on the screen. Uh, you can you can do these. Uh, you can put these graphics on the screen. Uh, you can even play a video actually on the screen as well. So it does it does a lot of great things. Uh, color is much better. Which one do you? Which one are you referring to, Harley? You're referring to the Logitech or the uh, Canon? Oh, okay. 
<laughs> Too much white. Yeah, I think maybe we have to adjust that. So good to know about that. So I guess our oh, Logitech is two orange. May just be the white balance issue. So, so I guess it's uh, one vote for the Canon. So maybe I'll stick with that. Thanks for the feedback. Okay, thank you. So Canon's color is better. Thanks, Harley. Appreciate that. Being the fix it man, you, you know about those things. Uh, I'll put it in here. Ecamm Live. I uh, probably should do a, um, a review of Ecamm Live because it's got a lot of features. But, um, oh, it seems my camera has stopped working there. I don't know what's going on there. Anyway, I'm uh, just going to keep going. Maybe uh, that might be a downside of using the Canon camera. Maybe the, 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 um, the battery has run out. So let me switch to Logitech, see if this... Oh, that's one still working and I switch to the Canon and it looks like it's fro does it is it frozen on your end or uh, uh, it's just frozen on my end seems like the picture's frozen on the uh, the Canon but anyway um, yeah so that's ecam live is the um, is the software that I'm using So I think the the biggest takeaway I would say from today's live stream is oh it's frozen oh okay okay maybe I'll just for now I'll switch to the Logitech and um, <laughs> not clear <laughs> oh maybe I'll move the you know, prop up a different camera here I'm going to switch. Okay. All right. Well, anyway, I'm just going to leave it how it is at the moment instead of rearranging the furniture. But anyway, biggest takeaway today is uh, try to improve your click through rate, try to improve your um, your average view duration, audience retention, and then also try to double down on those videos that are already doing well. So I think that's uh, probably the best uh, I, best advice. And then kind of if you need more information on that, then go and watch my uh, playlist or watch my videos on ranking videos. So how to rank your videos in search, how to rank your videos in uh, suggested, and how to rank your videos on in the browse features, etc. So thanks everyone for um, attending today's live stream. Sorry about the frozen uh, camera on the Canon, but uh, maybe the battery ran out. But uh, anyway, at least I got a backup camera here. Uh, thanks for attending today's live stream, and I hope you have a great weekend. And uh, we'll see you in the next live stream. All the best.